Hello and welcome to Capture One TV News. I'm Matt Ehrman reporting. Today is Friday, March 28th. Fostoria was visited on Wednesday by former Fostoria Redmond standout Micah Hyde. Good Shepherd Home hosted the event that featured a Q&A session with Hyde and former coach of the Fostoria Redmond, Tom Grine. A graduate and former player at the University of Iowa, Hyde currently plays football in the NFL for the Green Bay Packers. Executive Director Chris Widman said the event was to raise money for the Therapy for All campaign, which is currently under construction at Good Shepherd Home. Good evening. Again, welcome. It's a pleasure to have so uh, many people here as we uh, celebrate uh, Micah's return to uh, to Fall Story and, and to the Good Shepherd Home. Uh, my name is Chris Widman. I'm the Executive Director of the Good Shepherd Home. And uh, we welcome you uh, to our fundraiser for our Therapy for All uh, capital campaign, which uh, with the weather has just uh, resumed again. So we're excited about that. All right, help me welcome Coach Tom Grant. I'd like to thank uh, Chris for uh, inviting me to come out and say a few words tonight and uh, also uh, the uh, fabulous cause that this fundraiser is for. Uh, I first heard of Micah Hyde uh, back when I was uh, coaching here at Faustoria High School and people were coming up to me telling me about uh, his fifth or sixth grader that uh, uh, him and another uh, young man that was uh, in Faustoria at, at the time, Aaron Kraft, and uh, telling me that they were two very, very good athletes and, and those kinds of things. And that I can remember going over and watching Micah play uh, seventh and eighth grade football in our junior high school program. And uh, I could begin to understand why people were coming up and telling me about uh, Micah and his attributes and his physical abilities and, and those types of things. Uh, eventually he made it up to high school. Uh, I can remember the first time I really ever talked to him, we were up at uh, Lake Erie and uh, we had rented a place up there and he came up with my nephew, uh, Theo, and uh, I started talking to, to Micah for, for the first time. And uh, Micah, I don't know if you remember this, but we were up at that house and uh, we were in the driveway and I walked off 40 yards and uh, got out a, uh, a stopwatch I happened to have on my watch. And I said, well, let, let's see what you can do here uh, in this 40 yard dash. So. Uh, we got out there and timed him, and I think he might have ran a 5-2 or something like that. It was uh, terrible. Hey, we wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I never, uh, never gave up hope uh, for the young man. And uh, I, in fact, uh, when uh, Michael was a freshman, uh, he started the first game of the season uh, against Ottawa Glandorf, and uh, I think uh, we ended up with a little over 400 yards of total offense and. Uh, I think Micah had about 399 of those, and uh, I could see good things coming on the horizon. So uh, I hope they win every game, go to the Super Bowl, win that, except for the Browns, you know, when they play the Browns. <laughs> yeah, for an extra 10 bucks, we could have got uh, Browns hats instead of those cheese heads, but... Uh, um, we all, uh, you know, think about you know things that have happened to us and in different times in our lives when uh, you know something has occurred that, that's really made a difference. And uh, you know, make no mistake about it. You know, Micah, Micah has earned everything that he has today, and uh, it's all about attitude. You know, I strongly believe that. You know, having a positive attitude and uh, going out there and taking an opportunity, okay, seizing the moment and uh, giving it everything that you have in order to be successful. And uh, I think that epitomizes Micah and uh, what he's been able to do at the high school level, the collegiate level, and the professional level. And, uh, you know, we're all very, very proud of him. And, uh, you know, again, just uh, an example of uh, Micah paying forward by coming here tonight. And uh, we're all very, very appreciative of that. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you, for everyone, for coming. You know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for myself. I always said, you know, if I ever made it to this level, I was gonna give back, and um, you know, this is just the start of it. This is my first off season, and I and I'm gonna, I want to go from here. So, uh, and also, I want to thank my mom, thank thank Clayton, thank my grandparents, my family that came. Um, 
and also thank you to, to Ken and the Watson family. Um, you know, this is this was a great opportunity, great idea, and, and uh, it's awesome. Degree in about what yeah, education. Yeah. So I got my degree also in record sports business. Um, Appreciate that, John. You're welcome, John. <laughs> and yeah, so I got my degree, and uh, you know that was I've never been you know a straight A student, so that was probably one of my one of my biggest honors is. Uh, is actually walking away with a degree from the University of Iowa. So it was, it was awesome. Yeah. I got to take pictures over the years of a lot of the football players in Foss area. And a lot of the people, once they see you without your pads on, or any of the athletes, they've always said, my God, he's not, he's not huge. They, yeah. they think everybody in the NFL is... As, as big as a defensive line, yeah, and yeah, exactly. Line. How do you compete with that thought line? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think it's you know just what off uh, what, what Greasy said. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not all about you know how big you are, how fast you are in the NFL, and uh, you know at any at any level, at high school, collegiate level, NFL, it's all about you know how you prepare yourself. And I don't think people really understand that. And I mean, I thought I was big. And you're telling me something different. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I lift weights too, but but uh, no, it's just it's all mental, you know. When, once you get to the NFL, it's how you prepare. Um, you know, these, these guys might be you know four three you know, receivers, and you know they got guys like Calvin Johnson, which is a freak. You know, it takes three guys to cover, but at the same time, oh, he you know okay, he's unstoppable. But everyone else, you know, you can prepare for him and and uh, and do stuff like that. So it's just how you how how you are mentally and and how you prepare yourself. That's a good question. Uh, uh, first of all, grades. If it's my grades, you can't you can't participate in sports. I think that's the number one thing you gotta stay eligible. Um, but a, a, a good thing that my mom did uh, throughout growing up, throughout you know when I was five years old, started playing t-ball, soccer. Um, it, and I hate to say this, you guys are gonna laugh, but I think my mom had me in gymnastics for a couple of days because <laughs> she didn't have a babysitter for me. My sister was in it, so she just told me to go run around and jump around. So, but I think it was just it was. I never, I always was doing something. Um, I was never inside, you know, there wasn't the Xbox Ones and PS4s and stuff like that. You know, we did have video games, but I was never a, a, a gamer and, and stuff like that. I'm still terrible now. And so I was always outside playing, you know, playing basketball, making up games at the park, doing stuff like that. And I was always in, you know, football, basketball, baseball, soccer. Um, I played them sports, so I graduated. I wish I could have played soccer, but um, I don't think Coach Coach Brown would have, you know, let me play soccer uh, with it being a football season. But uh, I was always playing sports, and and to do that, I had to have my grades up. So that was the the two things that uh, that my mom made me do before I went out and played and stuff like that. The the very first day I went there, when the, when the vets, well, actually it wasn't the first day because I was all rookies, but it was probably the second week when the vets came back. And I was just sitting in the locker room. I'm sitting next to Sam Shields and Tremont Williams and across the ways, BJ Raji and all these commercials and Aaron Rodgers and Clay Matt. And it, it, you know, it kind of the first time was kind of like, wow, like I'm here. But at the same time, it's like it's a business. I, I understood that. So, you know, I'm not here to, to worship these guys. I'm here to play with them and compete against them and beat them. So, because um, the NFL is cutthroat. You know, if you have a very good game, they want you to be a Hall of Famer. They want you to, you know, retire at that team. But if you have a bad game, they're looking for a replacement the next day. That's right after the game's over. That's exactly how it is. I've seen guys that had, you know, good games one day and the next week have a terrible game and he's out. And, you know, they'll, they'll bring somebody else in. So it's so cutthroat. So you know, with with that being said, um, yeah, the first day I was kind of I was kind of shocked. I'm not gonna lie. But after that, uh, you know, I kind of kind of knew it was a business. I had to keep going. Yeah, like I said, I have I have no idea what they have in mind for me. Uh, you know, people are texting me saying, uh, you know, I heard you're playing safety. Is that true? I have no idea. None of the coaches have said anything to me yet. But at the same time, I played safety before. I played safety in high school. I played safety in college. Uh, I did corner in both too. So you know, whatever's thrown at me, I'll be able to I'll be able to uh, to go out there and compete and you know, hopefully uh, play to the best of my ability. That's it. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Have a good time.